want to thank you very much for coming out tonight for this, um, what's going to be a tremendous jazz performance by one of the masters, master drummers here in uh, the music kingdom. Uh, we are the Community Awareness Series of the Jersey City Free Public Library. Uh, we host a variety of programs with a special emphasis on jazz music, which is uh, the original American art form that has been given as a gift to the world. And that and also we must uh, remind ourselves and others that uh, this music uh, came out of the African American community over 110, 20 years ago and has uh, taken wings from, from that point and is music played and appreciated around the world and, uh, and uh, you'll find this music on every continent, uh, all kinds of uh, and mu uh, musicians on all levels and that and uh, you know we, we definitely appreciate the jazz artists that come through here which has uh, been a long list of master musicians and up and coming musicians as well. And that we're very uh, proud to have tonight's uh, super superb musician, Mr. Winard Harper, who is a resident of Jersey City, has been for the last uh, 30 or more years. Also, I want to mention that uh, there's a photo on the wall over there of a young Winard Harper who uh, performed here uh, and with the Harper brothers, him and Philip Harper and their, their group, uh, about 30 years ago, right on the stage. And that, so Winard's been, over the years, like one of the mainstays as well of the Community Awareness Series. Uh, if you want to catch him, you can always catch him uh, at Moore's, Fridays or Sundays when he's in town and not on the road and that but the music is always happening up there at Moore's on those those evenings and that so if you're not familiar with it go on out and check it out and that uh, we're not also nurtures young talent as well through uh, his sessions at, at Moore's and that um, so anyway with that uh, I want to thank you again for uh, braving the weather, uh, it put me in mind of uh, the Sarah Vaughan album, uh, Snowbound. We're going to try not to be snowbound tonight, and uh, we're going to go through one set straight ahead and uh, until it's over, and that, and uh, move on uh, from there. So once again, I want to thank you very much, and Winard is ready to take over, take the stage, and give us this great music, and that, let's give him a warm, hearty. Thank you. 
someday our prince will come. Yes. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here, though. Um, That's the court episode. <laughs> <laughs> we brought some very, very wonderful gifts for you. Some blessings. That's what I'm, that's what I'm calling it. Some blessings. I have uh, assembled some of the finest talent around. And I wanted to share with you, this is a special time this month. And uh, this music is, I can't say enough about it. It's powerful, it's special, it comes out of one people struggling and striving. It's now out here as a gift and a blessing to the whole world. Uh, we started out featuring our pianist. And it's a pleasure. Yeah. Just having him here for you. Uh, this gentleman, he's worked with the Who's Who. If you if you look him up, Google it. Uh, you see, he's worked with people like Carmen McRae, yeah. Helen Hill, yeah. Joe Williams. Whoa. When I met him, he he must have had it about 20 years in with the late great Joe Williams. Uh, Betty Carter, but I mean, the list goes on. I, when he performs with, with us, I tell all the young guys, he's one of the last gentlemen left that I know of that can say he played with the late, great Charlie Parker. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the piano, Chicago's own, Mr. Norman Simmons. Pleasure to have you. On the uh, contra bass fiddle, wonderful, wonderful round of applause, for Mr. Vince Dupont. <laughs> and uh, this young man had just left the stage. This is his first time working with us with this band, but he comes over and has been hitting and been gracious enough to share his talents with us over on uh, Monticello Avenue. Morris Lounge. We, every Sunday, I bring in all these great, wonderful, wonderful artists. And if you haven't been there, you're missing it. I mean, we've, we've had Wycliffe Gordon, Regina Carter, uh, Dave Stryker, uh, Mark Groves, Antonio Hart, Vincent Herring, Norman Simmons, Antoinette Montague, Vanessa Rubin. Every Sunday, there's somebody different. I mean, the, you know, the people that you would normally be spending 50 or $60 to go see, we bring them right here to the neighborhood to share this music with you. And this young man is no exception, and uh, i tell you a funny story how I met him. I got asked to do this tap dance festival out in Flint, Michigan. Yeah. So we get out there to Flint, and uh, all these great tap dancers, uh, Morris from, from Newark, he was there, all these guys, and I saw this brother, and we played, and I went up to him, and he came over to me, and we greeted each other. I said, man, where you live? He said, I live in Jersey City. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta be kidding. I live in Jersey City. I mean, you know, it turns out we weren't, you know, we weren't that far from this. I said, man, you gotta come out here with us sometime. But he lives right here in Jersey City. And uh, I'd like to see him do more things here. We hope, we've been talking about trying to start some tap dance classes. So please, I want you to acknowledge, give a wonderful, wonderful round of applause for Mr. Jason Samuel Smith. Get this, this Sunday at Morris Lounge, we're featuring the great drummer, Mr. Billy Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The following Sunday, our special guest is Mr. Jason Samuel Smith. Get your personal tap dance lesson, and we, you know, it's all here in the community. And uh, while I'm at it, I have to also say, I can't say enough about uh, the community awareness series. Mr. Dowell Williams, Barbara. We've been doing this for years. You know, as long as I lived here, the only, I would tell people the only place I would play in Jersey City was over here at the library. And that was once a year. You know, so and they've been doing this for a long time, making it work. So please, let's keep supporting. Give them a wonderful, wonderful round of applause. your teaser. We're going to continue the evening on and, and as you can see we have a whole bunch of special treats for you. So I'd like to continue some music and then I'll talk to you a little bit more.
Houston. I think this is his first time here with us. He's been in the band now probably a little over a year. Master drummer from Newark, New Jersey. All right. Mr. Faluso, BB. And I tell you, that's something rare, because um, a lot of people have known me over the years and seen me with the bands. Though I keep a, a lot of the African drummers with me, but most of the guys are from Africa. And it's hard sometimes finding guys that really understand both languages. And uh, we lucked up on this brother here. And he studied, he's been to the motherland. He knows the culture and knows the literature. And I can't say enough about it. New, New Jersey's own, Mr. Faluso Mimi. Like I said, we, we, I pulled no stops. I brought some of the cream of the cream for y'all. And uh, this young man is no exception. And we have a long history because when he was, when he was about my height, <laughs> uh, when he was a lot younger, he studied, him and his brother studied with my older brother down in Atlanta, Georgia. He's since come on the scene and uh, uh, plays his tail off, but he makes a whole pile of money. Matter of fact, my front line is the rich guys of this music. Matter of fact, I might ask him for a loan when he's done that. But he normally works with people like Jay Z and Prince, and you know, that's been what he does. But every now and then, I guess, what would you call it? We're not going to call it slumming, but maybe he comes out. He comes out, and I guess, uh, does benefit work for when our Harper. <laughs> when our Harper can't pay Jay-Z money, but... <laughs> so it must be, uh, we call it pro bono. That's what we call it, right? <laughs> Please, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause, Mr. Lee Hogan. Who has the most money? Because <laughs> they both work all the time. This, this, this next brother on saxophone, he's been with me for a while, but he's hard to get hold to. Because normally I call him up sometimes. I say, uh, where you at, man? I got to get you. Like, I, can't, I can't make it. I'm in China. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, next week? Uh, I, I, I'll be in Thailand. <laughs> well, what about the, I'm in Hong Kong? <laughs> you know, so he bounces around. He works with uh, Theo Croker and uh, D.D. Bridgewater. Wow. And uh, every now and then I can get hold to him when he don't double book, that is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I'm gonna hit you with that one. <laughs> but from Somerset, New Jersey. Very great county down there. Tennis saxophone, alto saxophone, ground saxophone. Please a wonderful, wonderful round of applause, Mr. Anthony Ware. On the guitar. Yes, indeed. And uh, he's a good brother and very, very talented. He's on. The, he's one of the rising stars of this music. And I have to tell you, him and the bass player. When I started doing these jam sessions here in Jersey City, is where I met them because they came out to play, and I could see that they were hungry <laughs> and they were serious. And they were good people. They were about respecting the tradition and this music for what it truly is, giving a gift to people. And uh, he's now one of some of the first call when people are looking for guitars. He's on the list, and I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. Please, a wonderful, wonderful round of applause for Mr. Charlie Siegler. Yeah. Again, this young man on the bass fiddle, when I first met him, he was 18. Still looks like he's about 15. <laughs> but again, he's becoming some of the first call. Again, a wonderful round of applause, Mr. Vince DuPont. <laughs> and again, at the piano. And this is a very, very special treat for you. If you don't know about this young man, please Google him. When you see him, I mean, I think, you know, 
is videos of him up playing with the late great Carmen McRae and Joe Williams and all kinds of wonderful special people. And uh, I'm glad he's still around for us to still have the opportunity to experience it. Because you know, this this has been a rough year. We've lost a lot of people. Amen. And I mean, we, you know, we've been getting hit hard, with, especially with a lot of the masters and a, a lot of you know people that are very dear and close to us. But I'm glad this young man is still with us. Once again, at the piano, Mr. Norman Simmons. <laughs> this next young man I'd like to introduce to you was born in Baltimore, Maryland, raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and Washington, D.C. He has toured and recorded with people like Dexter Gordon, Stan Getz, Betty Carter, Carl McRae, Dr. Billy Taylor, Jimmy Heath, Brooke Benton, the Platters. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome me? When I'm <laughs> You know, I wish we could do this once a month. I don't get to pull the full band out too often, so I get carried away sometimes. I try to play just about everything we got in the book, but I'm not gonna do that to you tonight. I've been told I better keep it short so I can get y'all home out of the snow. So um, we're gonna condense things quite a bit. And like I said, I have a bunch of wonderful special treats for you. We've also brought with us uh, one of my dear sisters, uh, a strong supporter of this music and the tradition, and a wonderful, wonderful talent. I want you to put your hands together. Also from Newark, New Jersey, please welcome to the bandstand, Miss Antoinette Montague.
speaks to what they're going through, their life, uh, social significance and spiritual significance, and we're going to continue in that vein. Uh, I have a dear friend here. I'd like to acknowledge her. And uh, there was a, we're going to do this next composition. It was written by a young man that I had the pleasure of working with. Man, off and on, I might have worked with him almost 20 years. And uh, he was incredible. A lot of people... Not as many people know him as should, but I'm speaking about the late, great Mr. Frank West. Oh, really? yes, yes. And amongst uh, the musicians, those who and all the older guys, they called him Magic. That was his nickname, Magic. And he was called Magic because of the way he played and, and his reading abilities and, and everything. His uh, expertise on all, all the instruments that he played was just incredible. His composer and everything. Uh, and I mean, he was playing like that up through 90 years old. Mm -hmm. Bug, just like, 
we'd be sitting on the stage and Frank would be playing all the all other guys would be like, God damn. <laughs> if I can play like that when I'm 60. <laughs> this is incredible. And then he'd take these condensers on the ballot. Boy, we'd be crying and stuff. I mean, he's an incredibly young man. But uh, his widow is here, Miss Sarah. Stand up to her. Thank you. Dedicated to Frank, uh, Dr. Billy Taylor, um, a lot of the wonderful people we've lost here of late, and my wife included. This is entitled Once Is Not Enough.
now this time we have another wonderful, wonderful treat for you. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring to the bandstand. She's been making uh, quite a bit of noise for herself here lately. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of little videos popping up. And she's been out making some, some, some little gigs. Getting her little funds together. <laughs> and uh, we're very, very uh, proud of her. Can you put your hands together? We're going to welcome to the bandstand Miss Camila Harper. <laughs>
next composition I'd like to do for you is a very, very special one. It's one I learned when I, well, a long time ago when I was a little, little bitty boy. <laughs> Come on, Antoinette. And uh, this is one that we're going to get all of you to join in with us. And it's a song of great, great significance. Black History Month and President's Weekend. Black History yeah. Month. Yeah. 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 And uh, love needs to be in the air. Peace needs to be in the air. We have let that slip. As a great, great prophet once said to me, we all related, we just don't want to act like it. Yes. <laughs> that was Mr. Norman Simmons on the phone. <laughs>
say love is the greatest. Don't we need more love? I want you to holler out so that everybody ain't losing 45, 46, or whatever it is. Though. All of our leaders. How many leaders we got out here? A leader ain't nothing but a good servant. And if you don't know how to serve, you really don't know how to lead. So love it. I think we all know how to do that. And if not, you ask the greatest, greatest love of all to help you to learn to love. Give it love, love it. We have to put music back in our schools. You don't have to have children in, in school or grandchildren, but call some of the schools that you know have a need that's great. Take out those old instruments from your closet, get them in good shape, give it to a disenfranchised young person, pay for a couple of cheap lessons. It is important. Without music and art, they have it in other affluent areas, but we have to make sure that Jersey City has it. The great city of Newark has it. There's a whole women film festival in March. We'll be there. We love you so much. But
national national anthem. You know, That's right. we all supposed to stand and rejoice and understand what that means. I don't know what happened, but when I was a little kid. That's how we would start off our points in Baltimore Public School. And all of us had to learn that song when we were 60s. <laughs> it was a revenant, but it still is. Well, we all had to learn that song. We would stand up and sing it. You just got so much feeling, you know, because you understood what it meant and what it was for and what it came out of. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's what Dawood and the community awareness, what they've been doing for years, we're trying to keep all of this happening, permeating throughout our neighborhoods. Because we need it for all of us. And I tell people, I think jazz helps to make people better human beings. Yes, yes. 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 Um, but we could use your help in getting this done. Um, come down, see us at the, the things that we do down at Moore's Lounge, like I said, every Sunday. Fridays is a straight up jam session. If you sing, you dance, you tell jokes, you have spoken word, you're invited. And we have a ball there. And, and you get fried fish. That's some of the best fried fish in the city. <laughs> you know? But that's, this is all what we're doing in the neighborhood. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm acknowledge this brother. He's sitting over here videotaping. <laughs> My good brother. That's how I found Morris Lounge. I was sitting at home. How many years ago is that now? About 10 years ago now, right? What a time they called me up. They said, hey man, we want to come get you and take you somewhere. I'm like, well, take me where? They said, don't, don't worry about it. Just, just be ready. We'll be around in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they came around and got me. And unbeknownst to me, it was right around the corner from my house. <laughs> it was walking distance. You know? Well, we pulled up, they took me inside. And this uh, little lounge on our. Uh, Monticello Avenue, they were trying to do, at that time, they were trying to have jazz, and it was a good brother, Tracy Simmons, they were trying to put it in once a month. And I went in, and we hung out, and I sat in. Thank you to these brothers, Khalid and uh, Jalil, they, they took me by. And I got to thinking, I said, you know, things are slowing down, you know, because that's the other sad part about what's going on. All of my mentors and the guys I work with are passing away. Yeah. So that means the work started. <laughs> The work started dropping. There's no more Billy Taylor for me, no more Frank West. And I, I tell Jimmy Heath when I talk to him all the time, I say, man, you're the last one left. After you, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, but I, you have to find other things. That's what happens. And so I say, well, you know what? This is something right here in the community. Our community needs the music. Let me see what I can do. And I went in and we started pitching in. We put it, started putting in a jam session on Fridays. And then I said, well, you know, instead of once a month, let's go every Sunday. And we went every Sunday and we were just doing it. And these guys, all these, these young musicians down there, they were just showing up to play with me. And I said, well, you know what? I got all these friends that ain't working either. You know what I mean? What's wrong with you? Again? No, we were sitting at home. You know? We all sitting at home not working as much as we should be, and a lot of people don't know who these wonderful artists are and what they contribute. I said, you know what? Let me start calling up a lot of my friends and see what we can do. And we started bringing people every Sunday. Uh, Rufus Reed, Paul West. I mean, all these people were, were gracious. Regina Carter. Um, I mean, you know, the list goes on. But they all come in on Sundays, we play, and we talk. But for us to continue all of these wonderful things, we need your help and your, your support. And I think you understand, if we can get this music to our youth, our young people, it makes them better thinkers. That's what this music is about. Why do you think this music is not as popular as it should be? There's a reason. They don't want you to have it. You know what I mean? They don't want independent thinkers. Okay. You know that? They want to, you know, you, they want to tell you about fake news or something. You know, it's crazy. Right. You always keep your mind distracted on some nonsense. Yeah. And, and they've taken culture, and sometimes our own culture, and use it against us. That's right. You know, because now sometimes the music that comes out, it's, it's not life-sustaining. Right. Right. You know, I tell people, culture and music, all that should be like your food. Now, if you eat Snickers bars for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and nothing else, I can guarantee you, you might as well sign up, you know, for some diseases. Take your choice. Heart disease and, exactly. and, and everything else, right? So what, music is the same thing. What you put in your body should be in some way nutritious. It should be something that, that promotes and gives life. That's what this music has been all about. I tell people, this music was at the forefront of integration. 
when people around the world heard and saw all of our great masters, you know, Louis Armstrong, Jelly Roll Morton, and, you know, all those guys play this music, they say, wait a minute, there's something else happening here. These ain't the people y'all telling us, uh, you know, can't think. Right. No way they can create and come up with this. Right. This open, helped open up the doors. It's in our hands now. We have to have to help pass it on. So I urge you, listen, when you out here and you're in some other clubs, festivals, um, get on the internet, throw us in a suggestion box. Tell people, hey, look, we want to see what our heart from Jelly Posse did. They helped you do that. We need that. We need that. If you're taking pictures and video in here, post it up. Let people know. Over in Jersey City, at the Miller Branch Library, Darrell Williams Community Awareness Series, they've been doing wonderful things for years. I mean, and I, I, I tell all the young guys to come in, man, I mean, even, I play here with David Fathead Newman, right? David Fathead Newman has been here, McCoy Towner has been here, right? Uh, Abdullah Ibrahim. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just, I mean, to name a few. A lot of people don't even know that's been happening right here. Kenny Barron. Kenny Barron, yeah, I don't know. Kenny, Kenny Barron's another one. Who, who else am I leaving off? Y'all know better than I do. Right? Uh, Lonnie, Lonnie, this is good. Houston person. And I tell you, who, who, who else has come here that was, you mean, and, and his father was like my hero. Anybody tell you, you come in my house, <laughs> on my door there's a big picture of Paul Robeson. Yeah. That's always been like, you know, I love me some Paul Rosen. All my drum students would tell you that's part of their reading for me. Because to me, his life is a, a great example of this music, what this music be about. And he used to have Paul Robeson Jr. here, right? That's right. So, I mean, listen, there's wonderful things out there. We have to get with it and support them. So I'm asking and urging you, help us. Help us do this. Help us make this infectious so uh, we can spread all of this love and let people know this music is the greatest example of democracy that you ever will see. Amen. You look up on the bandstand, you see people from all walks of life, all shades, colors, different religions, but they all operating trying to make one. Isn't that what America's supposed to be? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what we're doing, and that's why this music is so, is so, so, so special. Now, have I eaten up all my time, or where, where we at? What you need? I see you standing in the wings. What you need me to do? Uh, you want to make an announcement, or we? Well, where we at? Oh, there's oh yeah. I know there's some food in the back. There's something in the back. <laughs> but listen, also I have. See, turn around so they can see this shirt. See that wonderful, beautiful shirt he has on? Yeah. There's something right there on that table. You see that, that 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 handsome young man back there? He has uh he has shirts back there. So go see him and, and get you one. So this young lady here, she she's uh profiling the one and uh that white and black one that has those strings. But see him back there if you want to get one of those shirts. To, you know, take it home with you and then you you can get the guys to sign on it for you. Is the announcement coming from you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw something else in the pot. But one of one of round of applause for the guy with the Uh, I know you're enjoying yourself. Oh yeah. Uh, and this is some great music, and Whitmore always brings it on. And uh, we leave here very inspired, uh, ready to tackle all the issues and, and goodwill here in the world. I want to also uh, mention there's some flyers on the back, but our next CAS program here at Miller Branch is uh, part of Women's History Month. Yeah. And, uh, we're celebrating women in the arts, and we have uh, Dr. Daisy Nelson Century, Century who uh, comes up from Philadelphia, and uh, she has a doctorate from Temple University, but she's an actress and an interpreter, and when she comes here, she's going to do the life and times of Sojourner Truth. One of the great uh, human rights, abolitionists, anti-slavery fighters that have uh, come out of the United States of America. Her life will be portrayed on the stage by uh, Dr. Daisy Century. So we want to invite you. That's going to be March 17th 
at 7.30 p.m. right here. Uh, we welcome you back. And uh, once again, we want to thank you very much for being out tonight and hearing uh, one of the uh, fabulous musicians of jazz music spreading the word as he does so beautifully. We're going to hear another final tune and let's say an encore for Winard Harper and John Parker. Yeah. Um, we're trying to figure something out. Come on, Camila. Anybody who knows me know I stay up late night. Sometimes people ask me, when do you sleep? <laughs> Not enough, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know, it's just a habit. I mean, I've, I've been playing at clubs since I was five years old, so <laughs> I had the late night bug early. And I'm just used to staying up late. And the funny thing is all these wonderful things happen late night. You know, sometimes I'll be flipping the channel, and I don't know, listen, y'all tell me what you think. I tell you, I'm just going to put the information out there. But for whatever reason, all of the wonderful black history stuff come on late night. <laughs> Anybody ever notice that? I mean, it's like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. All this great stuff comes on. I'm like, well, what happened to prime time? I'm like, but listen, and uh, I was up uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, and I hadn't seen this movie in a while, but I remember it as a little kid because it always stood out to me. Anybody ever see that movie that they did on uh, the life of W.C. Handy? Yeah. It's got a Nat King Cole, Eartha Kitt. Uh, who else is in there? Ella Fitzgerald is in there. Yeah. Mahalia Jackson is in there. Pearl Bailey is in it. Nobody ever see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not hearing enough. Yes. Anybody ever see that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Ruby. Yeah. Ruby D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cab Calloway. I'm just like this. That's. I mean, that's 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 packed. You want a ticket to that yourself? <laughs> but I mean, uh, but there's a song that uh, Nat sings throughout the movie, and uh, it's beautiful. You know, I, I always liked it. And I just happened to be in the car and I was telling Vince, you know, I asked him had he ever seen the movie because it came on the other night and I saw it. And funny thing, Vince said to me, he said, yeah, man, you know, think about that movie, there's this tune that I really like and it happens to be the same song that I was talking about. I said, yeah, you know, well, maybe we should try to play it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, and I played it for Camila a couple of times. And it's, uh, it's a very, very beautiful thing written by uh, W.C. Handy. And it just happens to fit, because as I told you, uh, a few months ago, I lost my wife. Well, obviously, Camila lost her mother, you know. And uh, it's just something that, for whatever reason, it just touched us so much. So this is our first time even ever attempting to do this. So I want you to, to bear that in mind and bear with us. And we want to try to do this composition for you by W.C. Handy entitled Morning Star. child, I asked my mother, is there a morning star? I was answered by my mother, yes, there's a morning star. Just before the dawn, she whispered, a light will appear above. And the star that greets the sunrise, this is the star of love, for this is the morning star that shines above. Yes, this is the morning star, this is the star of love. And then I asked my mother, will I see the morning star? by my mother you will see the morning star it means for just one moment one moment in the skies then it shines 
all should be doing. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.